Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make conchas. We're not just going to make eight, we're going to make 16 so that you can have one uh, on Monday and then you can have some on Tuesday. And not to worry, for those of you that don't have time to make individual conchas, I'm going to show you how to make a concha cake. You'll need six and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups of sugar, one and a half cups of milk, four room temperature eggs, half a cup of butter, two tablespoons of vegetable shortening, two tablespoons of vanilla, one tablespoon of baking powder, four tablespoons of yeast, one teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of cinnamon. To your warm milk, you wanna add one tablespoon of sugar and your yeast. Combine your ingredients, and the reason we're doing this is because we wanna proof our yeast, which means we wanna wake it up, and some of us leave our yeast there for a while, and you don't know if it's active, so we wanna make sure our yeast is active, and this should take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to proof. Next, you wanna crack your eggs because you don't want any eggshells in your conchas. And you can add your vanilla to your milk or you can add it right into your eggs. This is gonna change the color of your conchas if you're looking for a white look and this is gonna give it more of a brown looking color, but you can adjust to taste. I'm going with the two tablespoons as I recommended. To your bowl, you wanna add your sugar, salt, Mexican cinnamon. What I did is I used our Mexican cinnamon sticks. I put them in the blender at a high speed and they give you a little bit of the coarse blend, which I love in my conchas. Place your sifter and add your flour, baking powder, and start sifting it into your big bowl. Not only is it snowing in my bowl, it's snowing outside. How beautiful is this? So romantic. Add your sifted flour and baking powder into your bowl. For those of you that don't have a stand mixer, don't worry, you can make these by hand and I'll link the recipe in the description area. Give that a mix if you see your cinnamons just sticking to one spot and then you wanna make a little well right in the center. You see these little bubbles right here? That means that our yeast is perfect for baking. And if you look over the top, you can see all the bubbling. You don't have to wait the full 15 minutes for it, but this means that we're ready to add it into our bowl. Add your room temperature eggs and your vanilla mixture, delicious butter, and your shortening. I'm gonna be using our hook and we're gonna start mixing slowly and then we're gonna pick up the speed once you see everything blends because if you go full blast right now, you're gonna make a mess in your kitchen. I don't want you to do that because the less we clean, the better we feel. I didn't mean that you don't have to clean your home. You guys better be cleaning or I'm gonna come for you. Clean as you go. <laughs> clean as you go, that's right, Cloud. Give or take about four minutes of mixing, your dough is exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna give it one quick knead so that I can smooth out our ball of dough. See, and that's what I like. I like the little specks of cinnamon. It just makes it feel like one of the ones you get in Mexico. So good. Roll to coat with the oil. And now we're gonna allow our dough to rise for a good hour and a half to two. For your concha topping, you're gonna need to use one cup of flour. If you started the recipe with all-purpose flour, use all-purpose flour. And if you're using bread flour, go ahead and use bread flour. One cup of powdered sugar and one cup of vegetable shortening. Now this is where you wanna make it comfortable for your home. If you wanna keep them traditional pink, you're gonna need a little bit of food coloring. You can also use some hot chocolate or even your Nestle Quick strawberry mix to change the color of your topping. It's really gonna be up to you. I'm gonna start off with a few drops of our red to turn this pink. And I'm gonna be using a paddle to combine all our ingredients until smooth. And the best advice that I can give you when you're making your paste is you might add a little bit more flour and what you wanna achieve is when you pick it up, it looks nice and smooth like Play-Doh. Dust a little bit of flour on your clean counter and scrape all of your paste out of your bowl. And you don't need that much flour, it's just to get that outer dusting so that you can avoid too much sticking for yourself. If you're following the recipe for eight conchas, you wanna slice your concha topping to eight little balls. And if you're following the large one, then you wanna do 16. But if you're gonna be making the casserole for the whole family, then you just have to smooth this out and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And now you wanna grab each little piece and roll it up into a little ball. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be using a tortilla press to smooth it out for you. Dust some more flour on your counter I allowed our dough to rise for two hours. And I'm just gonna give that a real quick knead. Soft and pliable. This is gonna be the most beautiful conchas you have ever made. I'm gonna be so proud of you. 
And now I'm gonna cut our dough into 16 pieces. Now, if you wanna make larger conchas, you can actually make a dozen out of this big one. These days I go about making my balls this way because then I can weigh them and see which one needs less. And when one needs less, I just take a little pinch out, put it to the side, and continue with the remaining pieces. And you just wanna roll them up just like this in a circular motion, make little balls. You wanna place your conchas on your baking sheet and you wanna give them enough space to rise. You wanna take your concha topping ball and sometimes when I'm about to press them, they get kinda of sticky. So here's my tip to you. Dust them in a little bit of flour, just like this. You don't need too much, just a little. You're gonna place it on your press. And you're gonna press this as big enough as you need to cover your concha. and it's smooth every time. Once you place your topping, you wanna to cut on the top just like this to make sure that they're nice and secure. And you can use your concha mold for the top uh, if you're selling, but if you're at home, these are homemade. So go ahead and make them homemade into a nice little shell. And it does help me to move my tray. From the moment we started pressing our concha topping to molding our conchas, it's been about 30-35 minutes. That's a perfect amount of time to allow your conchas to rise once again. So I'm hoping that you guys have warmed up your oven at 350 degrees and we're going to continue to bake for 20 to 22 minutes. Remember, the heat rises up, so don't place any of your conchas on that bottom tray because you're going to end up burning the bottoms. And boom, done, our conchas are ready. One of the ways that you can check if your conchas are ready is if you see a little bit of the crackling. I've already touched this one, so don't touch it if you don't wanna mess up how they look. Um, but I'm gonna let them rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before anybody can get their little hands on them. And you know what they say, Steph, anything the light touches is mine. <laughs> I don't know, if you guys feel the same way, let us know in the comments. And for the concha cake, I just allowed it to rise. I laid it here on the counter with some flour and then I placed it right in here and I just started pressing down. You don't have to roll it out perfectly because you can smooth it out this way. I have our concha topping ready and let's have some fun. Pretty fun, right? <laughs> so I'm just gonna press it here at the edges and whatever comes off, comes off. I'm gonna start slicing and making little grooves. And I'll leave your baking instructions for your concha cake right in the description area. They stick together, just break them apart. Well, you really don't break them. You cook them to perfection. And I'm a believer in showing your baked goods. So today is no different. Oh, nice, soft, and fluffy. Baked to perfection just for you. I hope you love how lovely these smell. And please come back and let us know what you think. Buen provecho. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> these are so good. They're absolutely delicious and perfect for you to dip in your coffee or your hot chocolate. If you make them, please come back and let us know what you think. Uh, we'd love to know and see how you're doing with your baked goods. Mm. As always, Claude and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we want to thank our silent viewers. I used to be a shy one too and sometimes I still am and it's okay. Thank you for being here and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Thanks for watching. More info is in the description. Please subscribe. Like, comment and share.